Hello and welcome to this uh, 360 video for the chemistry department at the University of Bath. I am Dan Pantos and I am the admissions tutor and here with me I have Dr. Simon Lewis who is on the admissions team. So chemistry at the University of Bath is located in two buildings, one south which is chemistry research and three south which is chemistry teaching. And here we go, we'll go to see, show you our teaching facilities. All right, so here we go. We have our PPE on, so we have yep. our lab so coats we're good. and the safety specs. We can go straight in the lab. So here on the ground floor, this is the physical chemistry lab. So in we come. All right, so here is the uh, physical chemistry lab. And uh, it's a Thursday, so this is a year one physical chemistry lab class. So in here, students are working either alone or in pairs. And as you can see in the lab now, uh, we have students, first year students that have white lab coats and then support staff that have darker or colored lab coats. We have a nice color coding system in the sense that the senior demonstrator, which is Fiona in, in the back there, an academic, um, is having a dark lab coat and uh, the PhD students helping with the experiments, the demonstrators, have also dark lab coats while the support technical staff have red or green lab coats. And this is just to show you our physical chemistry laboratory. And each bench is dedicated to an experiment. And the way how it works is that the students will get at the beginning of the academic year a uh, lab book with the experiments described inside. And then they will progress and they do one experiment at a time, once a week. And like that, they'll get to do all the experiments needed in order for them to get the skills necessary from a physical chemistry and analytical chemistry point of view. So All physical right. chemistry uh, in this lab, the experiments are not so much about making molecules, uh, it's really more concerned with measuring the properties of, of certain substances. So that's what ultimately the experiments are all about. All right, so now uh, we'll go upstairs to the synthetic lab. Thank you very much, guys. See you. Thanks, Fiona. Bye-bye. So now we go up the stairs and uh, in here actually before we go up the stairs what you see there uh, that, that blue door that says entrance only that is our computational chemistry lab and students would go in there in a normal year and do molecular modeling so basically that's what you do when you want to predict the properties of molecules before you make them right so this is extremely powerful especially in, in modern medicine in modern pharma so um, you'll get to do that hands-on Obviously now, because everything is remote, the students can access the computers remotely and they do the work from, from their uh, rooms. But now we go to the uh, synthetic lab. All right. Okay. And in here, on the top floor, we have also some communal area for students and there are some lockers uh, where students can leave their belongings. Um, needless to say, um, it is much quieter than usual because of the uh, restrictions, the social distancing restrictions. And now we're going into the synthetic lab. All right. So here in the uh, synthetic lab, we teach both organic and inorganic chemistry courses. Uh, so this lab is about uh, double the size of the one downstairs, and we have roughly double the number of students in. As Dan said, in a normal year, you would have more students in this lab, but we're adhering to capacity limits, so we can only have a certain number in the lab at once. And then what that means, of course, is they can't all do the experiment at the same time. They have to take it in turns over subsequent lab sessions. So here, what happens is, if you can see here on this blue cabinet, there are some numbers. Each student is assigned a cabinet at the beginning of the year. And then in there you have all the glassware that you need for the experiments that you will be doing each uh, week. Then you have a lab manual and I can see over there a student is looking at their lab manual. And in the lab manual you'll have all the experiments that you need to do detailed with all the questions that you need to answer and all that. And then afterwards, after the experiment is done, you get to write a lab report which will be marked by a member of staff. Um, and like that you get your uh, formative assessment because you will get feedback from what you have done in um, that particular lab and also in the report. Needless to say, here we have as well uh, support staff that are here to help you guys when you do the experiments and to answer your questions. But of course to make sure that you are safe and that you're learning the techniques properly. 
All right, so now we get out of the teaching lab. Yeah, let's leave these guys in peace. Yes, thank you guys, see you later. Bye-bye. And um, now we will go back downstairs and we'll go into chemistry research. So, as I said, you will be spending the time um, between uh, the one south building, which is chemistry research, and the three south building, which is chemistry teaching. In the first year, uh, and the second year you'll be in this building in 3 South most of the time doing the labs while in your third and fourth year you will spend time in chemistry research. Okay, so back into the 1 South building. Okay. Right. So through here. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, this is chemistry research. This is the main lobby. And now we're going to show you where you can meet your personal tutors, where the academics offices are, and uh, where you'll have your tutorials as yeah. well. And this building is divided into two halves, and this is the half where the offices are. So, around here we have individual staff members' offices. And this is where you would have subject tutorials, it's where you would meet your uh, personal tutor, that kind of thing. Uh, this little area in the middle here, we call it the pool area. I don't even know why, to be honest, it's not an actual pool. But this is just a bit of social space where people hang out and have their uh, lunch and things like that. So, as I say, the main reason you'd be in this part of the building would be to meet with staff members the other thing that's in this side of the building, in fact over here on the other side, are the research laboratories. So we're going to take a look in there now. And uh, here, for example, like on the left hand side, you have the physical chemistry laboratories. And in here on the right hand side, we'll just oh, yeah. peek in here for quickly. So this um, is NMR. These so are two of our... Yeah, we have five in total NMR spectrometers in the chemistry department. Two of them are in here. Uh, I think these days most people learn a bit about NMR before they come to study chemistry at university, uh, but very few people have a chance to actually use it. Uh, but you will be interpreting NMR spectra from, from really from the beginning of the course here, from, from yes. year one, and as you go through the year, later years, you'll actually be getting your own NMR spectra of molecules that you've made yourself. All right, and now we're going to go to a synthetic lab because I'm an organic chemist. Simon is an organic chemist, as it happens. And uh, now we're going to show you how a research lab looks like. All right, so this is a synthetic chemistry lab. Oh, look, two PhD students hard at work. Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. So um, here you, in, in a lab like this, you'd be in a lab like this in your third or fourth year doing research projects. So you have in there some fume covers, then on this other side here you have some rotary evaporators and all kinds of specialized pieces of kit that uh, one uses for research. And um, see you later. Bye. And uh, now we'll go, and so what you've seen now is a synthetic chemistry, organic chemistry lab. And now we'll go upstairs and we'll look into an inorganic chemistry lab. Okay. And okay. if you come in here, uh, this is our colleague here, Dr. David Liptrop. This is his lab. And if you look around, you'll see that some of the equipment here is pretty similar to what we saw downstairs in an organic lab. However, some things are quite different. In uh, inorganic chemistry, you're much more likely to be working with highly air sensitive things that need to be protected from air and from moisture in the air. So a glove box like this would be pretty routine equipment in an inorganic chemistry lab. And again, this is the kind of thing you'll get to use if for a final year project, you actually end up doing an inorganic chemistry project. That's right. All right. Thanks, Dave. Hey, thanks, Dave. Okay, and then here we're going to show you some um, nice um, instruments yeah, that allow take... us to determine the structure of compounds as well. So this is our X-ray crystallography suite. And uh, we have several of these machines here called X-ray diffractometers, uh, whose purpose is essentially to take a crystal of a, a molecule, I shine X-rays. I can see a little bit inside. Yeah, yeah. Can, is it going to pick that up? Yeah, can you see maybe. in there? So there's an intense X-ray beam, and the X-rays get bounced off the atoms in all different directions. We do some clever maths you work out where the atoms must have been 
to uh, diffract the x-rays in those directions mm -hmm. and then you work out what molecule you have and in fact if you come over here uh, so there's clearly um, an experiment on the go at the moment and that might actually look like the Milky Way galaxy yes. or something <laughs> like these but these are x-ray diffraction spots and this this looks like a pretty good and I think so in there, if we can look in the other uh, one. Ah, the light's on in here, yeah. The light's on, here. so then you can see the x ray diffractometer, so how it looks inside. A tiny, tiny crystal held on that little, little thing that just looks like a, a pinhead there, with the x rays being fired at that. And that's what we get all this structural information from. So we have some other instruments, also uh, X-ray diffractometers here. And uh, basically, okay, the idea is that uh, students in their third and fourth year, when they do their research projects, they get to use them and then have a hands-on experience with all these kind of uh, very interesting um, pieces of scientific experiment, uh, a, a scientific instrumentation, which is very useful because it will give you an edge uh, to compare to some of your competitors, let's say, after you're done with your chemistry degree and you're trying to get a job uh, in chemical industry, let's say. Yeah. One uh, other thing, actually, that you may have noticed is that when we were looking around in 3South and you saw uh, the equipment that was in the legs in 3South, you'll have noticed that a lot of the labs here, where research is conducted, have the same equipment. So the stuff we're teaching you to use from year one of the course, that is the stuff you need to know how to use. Uh, in genuine yep. chemistry research. All right, so let's All see. Right. So we're back on the office side of the building, only this time we're on the first floor. Uh, so actually now we can uh, take a look down here into the into pool, the pool area. area. Yeah. Okay. All right. Super. And then here also, this is the back of the building, right? And here, if you're lucky in the weekends usually, you see um, wild animals. You see deer here, rabbits. Rabbits are regular, but oh, like deer and everywhere. all that. So it's it's quite nice. Uh, we live, uh, we live well. We work on a very beautiful campus. Let's put it this way. That's true. That's for sure. All right. Okay. And uh, we're back now on the ground floor in the pool area, and uh, soon we'll conclude our tour. I better respect the one-way system. And uh, yeah, we hope that uh, you guys have um, enjoyed this tour. Yeah, bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.